Nikon Z cameras have a lot of options in the menus. So much that it can be intimidating just to go in there to change the most basic settings, you know, wasting so much time hunting around for those options. But the reality is that you might only ever use like, what, 5% of what's in there? So in this video, which is an excerpt from the Nikon Z Photography Fundamentals course, I'm gonna walk you through the three different custom menus that you have in your Nikon Z camera to help you more quickly, uh, and more importantly, more efficiently use your camera. That course, if you wanna check it out, uh, goes over an overview and setup of your Nikon Z camera, no matter what your model is, goes into all of the different focus tools and how to customize your focus system, same with exposure, uh, and how to nail that perfect exposure. You can check that out at photocourses.link slash Nikon Z. And here is how to customize your Nikon Z menus for more efficient photography. Let's now move on to the I menu. This is my favorite menu. It's a quick menu that can be pulled up in shooting mode. You press the I button and it contains 12 commonly used items that you can quickly change without going into the main menus. There's a couple of different ways to use the I menu. You can use the multi selector to highlight the item that you want to change and then either use the dials like the main command dial, the sub command dial, or the control dial to quickly change those options. Some of the items are going to have you use both the main or the control dial to change one sub setting, and then the sub command dial to change another sub setting. You'll see that at the top of the screen. As you scroll through the settings, it'll show you what's changing and which dial changes which setting. For example, if we look at the white balance option here, we'll see that the main command dial changes the main white balance settings, while the sub command dial is used to change some of the sub settings for that white balance setting. The other way to use the I menu is to press OK on the item that you've highlighted to enter the sub menu for that item. And like the main menu, you'll find instructions at the bottom of the screen for how to change the settings in that sub menu. For example, here, it shows that you can press the multi selector down to take you into further sub menus. Use the dials or the multi selector to select the different options. Now that I menu is great if those default 12 settings are the 12 settings that you want to use, but what if they're not? Well, you can customize this I menu. You can get rid of items that you never use and replace those with items that aren't in the I menu, but that you use quite a bit. So to customize your I menu, to rearrange it, put different options in there, go to the custom settings menu, F1 for shooting mode and G1 to customize the movie mode I menu. When you're in here, all you need to do is highlight the item that you want to change and press OK. Select from that list the item that you want to put in there. Press OK again to save it. Repeat that process and just press menu when you're done. Use the camera for a while and note which settings that you'd like to have in your I menu and how you want to arrange it. You'll eventually refine that I menu to make you a much more efficient photographer. It can be a really big help for you. My other favorite menu is My Menu, and that's at the bottom of the main menu list. Let's be honest, as we said, there's a lot of stuff in those menus. There are countless pages and countless items that you have to scroll through. The reality is though, that you may only ever change the same 10 or so settings after getting your camera set up. So why should you have to scroll through all of those different menu pages to change those same 10 settings? You can just put them all in one menu so that you don't ever have to scroll through those menus ever again. So if you go to my menu and select add items, you're going to choose from the list what you want to add to your custom menu and press OK. When you repeat that process, when you have more than one item in here, 
you're going to use the multi-selector up or down to arrange that item in the order that you want. You can make your most commonly used menu items up at the top and the ones that you don't use quite as much down at the bottom. Some items cannot be added to your My Menu, like Reset. You're gonna see a crossed out checkbox next to those items that you cannot add. Some items let you put submenus into My Menu. For example, in the photo shooting menu, you see ISO sensitivity setting has an arrow next to it. That means that if you press the multi-selector right, you can enter that submenu. And then, like what I do, is I put auto ISO sensitivity control on or off as a top level item in my menu for faster access. So I don't have to go into that submenu. It's there at the top. You can delete items by highlighting that item and then pressing the delete button, press delete again to confirm that or menu to cancel. You can also later rearrange the items if you need to. You'll choose rank items, highlight the item that you want to rearrange, press okay, and then use the multi-selector to give it a new home, pressing OK again to save it. You'll also see a Choose tab at the bottom of my menu. If you select Choose tab, now you can toggle between my menu that you just set up and recent settings. The recent settings option is a dynamic custom menu of your most recently changed menu settings all in one place and you may prefer to use that over a static saved custom menu. If you're not sure which items you want to save into my menu, you can just use recent for now. All of the last settings that you used are gonna be right there for you. If you are going to create a custom menu, which I would highly encourage, like the iMenu, use the camera for a while. Figure out which settings that you want to include in this custom menu. It's gonna be a huge time saver for you and it's gonna help you avoid frustration. I wasn't quite sure where to mention the touch screen, either in the top of the video or at the end of the video. You've heard me mention the touch screen before. It's a bit of an afterthought for me just because I've never been in the habit of using touch screens on cameras, but you can actually do a lot with it in Nikon Z cameras. In fact, you might only use the touch screen if that's your thing. It's enabled by default. It can be disabled if you don't want to use it, if you find yourself accidentally touching the screen and changing settings that you didn't mean to. If you go to the setup menu, touch controls, you can choose to disable to turn off the touch screen altogether, or you can choose playback only, which is going to disable the touch screen for everything except for playback mode you will have the touchscreen in playback mode with that option selected. Any menu category, any menu item and submenu setting can be selected just by tapping on the touchscreen. It's actually quite accurate. You can tap on checkboxes to check or uncheck that item and then tap the on off options also to toggle those. If you're looking at a keypad, you can use the touchscreen to type on the keypad rather than having to use the multi-selector to select all of the different letters. You can tap on that back arrow at the top of the screen to return to the previous menu, and you can also swipe your finger up or down to scroll through the menus. The touchscreen also works for the I menu as a way of selecting an item, and when you use the touchscreen for this, it's very similar to highlighting an item with the multi-selector and then pressing OK. It's gonna take you into that submenu where you'll then use the multi-selector, the touchscreen, or the command dials to change the settings. And then in shooting mode, anything that you see on the screen with a white box around it is available for touch control. Things like entering the I menu, the touch shooting mode, and some of the exposure variables, depending on which exposure mode you're in. And then in playback mode, the touchscreen pinch and swipe gestures, they work much like we're used to with our phones. 
We're gonna learn all about how to use the touchscreen for focus and exposure controls in later lessons. So just knowing how to use the menus, even if you don't know what all of those settings are, it can really help set you up for success.